Welcome. I'm here with Dina Strada, a good friend of mine and also a colleague. We are here today to try to alleviate some of the quagmire that has been going on. I really wanted to say fuckery, but I said quagmire instead. <laughs> that I like been... to say shit show, Monica. That's how I'm looking at what's happening. It's a shit show. Yeah, a shit show <laughs> with COVID-19. Um, and there's some like there are some serious things we want to talk about, but I feel like some levity is also welcome at this time. What do you think, Dina? I, I agree. I think that Monica and I talked about coming together. We both do very similar things as intuitives and healers and coaches. And I think it was really important to both of us that we get our communities together and feel like we're being of service in some way and being supportive, but also talking about just what our own thoughts are on why this is happening at this time on the planet. And so we really wanted to, you know, find a way to communicate it to you and then find out what you're going through and how we can be of service in the weeks moving forward. Yeah, I think that's really the, um, the best thing you could have said there is being of service is really important to both of us. And I've had people messaging me literally daily asking for support. And I've been very, very slow to get on. Well, I don't do Facebook lives anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we both have a thing with video. So the fact that we are making this offering to you means we really genuinely want to be of service because it's yeah. a lot for either of us to get on video and to put ourselves out there. I have had things to say, but it's just been, I and I've been holding back just to kind of realize what it is that I'm going through myself before I put myself out there. I wanted to know how I was grounded and how I was feeling in this situation. Um, so, and then I thought there was enough people reaching out that we could do a collective video. So let me ask you, Dina, then, how has it been for you? You know, it's been surprisingly amazing in many ways. Um, for me personally, it's been a big reset and my life. Uh, I'm a little bit of an introvert anyway, and I tend to go a million miles a minute being a working mom and a single mom. And so having to homeschool and work from home and navigate, you know, my side business um, typically takes a lot of time and energy. And I'm finding that because we're forced into this sort of, you know, uh, stay at home vacation, it's bought up a lot of feelings. I didn't know were there. And so for me, it's, it's allowing me to step into what I know I should be doing fully, which is writing and, um, you know, doing more intuitive readings and workshops and mindful meditation. And, um, I led my first mindful meditation workshop for kids today, which was amazing. What? something that I've ever made time to do, but there is such a need for it. And my son, who's my biggest critic, I think, said, that was the most awesome thing ever, mom. That was amazing. And I said, well, what was so great about it? And he said, just like the, like the quiet, the quiet, just the, you know, and I think that's what I'm enjoying the most is the quiet and like be getting still so that I could hear myself. And I'm, I'm getting a lot of feedback from um, people that I work with and friends that the same thing is coming up for them. Yeah. And we're both on the West coast, mm -hmm. although in a very different environment, you're in LA. <laughs> yes. And I'm on Vancouver Island, which is a much smaller community and obviously off continent. And, um, so it's been eerily quiet here. I'm sure it's been eerily quiet in some ways there. Um, and so it's, I'm always curious about how different communities deal with it. For me, it's been not so much fear, but um, a lot of tension. I feel it in my heart chakra. I feel the distancing. Although I'm an introvert, the distancing even for me feels weird. It just feels like this is not the way that we should be, you know, being with each other. The other thing is, is that I think that humans are very, very good. Now we can see how very good we are at coming together for something if we really need to. And we haven't had to do this kind of big scale coming together since the Second World War. Right. Um, 
And there's a lot of different ways that we can deal with this, but really, we can't really solve what is happening in the world right now with our minds. You know, we have to come at it from the place of soul. And I think that a lot of us are trying to figure it out with our mind because that's natural for us. It's natural for us to try to, you know, yeah. Yeah. compartmentalize it in our brain and then have thoughts about those compartments and then, you know, put everything, you know, put things in place. And so more than ever now, we really, really need to be centered and grounded. And we talk about that all the time. Like we talk about, okay, so I really have not grounded today and I'm an empath and I feel very scattered. And now there's such a need for it. And I feel like sometimes we forget how to go back to the basics, the things that we already know how to do. We already know how to be centered. We already know right. how to be, yeah. Well, we do, but I think what's happening is that there's a lot of people that don't make the space and the time mm -hmm. to ground and to connect and to be present. And I think that's what we're being called to do. And so I also, I, I operate so much from heart, soul, spirit level, as I know you do. And you and I have had these conversations and we both, we both have our spirit guides Monica's spirit guide's name is Aiden. He's a super hottie, apparently. So anytime <laughs> I'm not getting the information I want from my guides, I'm like, can you hit Aiden up and ask him what is happening? Mm -hmm. um, but um, just to share, and something I think that we want everybody who's listening to this to do is, you know, we all have that ability to tap into our own um, spirit and our own guides. And, and I think we're being called to do that. Um, as a collective and um, as a way to raise our, our consciousness is to get out of the mind and into the soul um, and ask like what is supposed to be let go of what, what am I supposed to let go of um, when things go back to normal what are the things that are coming up for me on a heart soul spirit level that I need to look at um, and for everybody it's been something different but I, I will share just in my own like mom community, like the text messages that are going back and forth are not just funny, but like really amazing about the things that are happening within the family unit and with their partners and with their husbands and, mm. and all positive, by the way, like really, really positive. Nobody has said, oh, this has been so awful spending time with my family. Or it's, oh, it's been so awful having all this extra time to have these conversations with my spouse. I don't know what's going on with you and your spouse. But well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you, because that is a funny story. So I have my own intelligence. Um, and then also I have the stuff that I received from my guide, Aiden, who has been really, really amazing at a reassuring me and and sending messages to my community as well that everything will be well and that there are a lot of uh, luminous and benevolent um, beings from the star nations that are supporting us and are they're watching what's happening here but they're also beaming an incredible amount of love to the planet and that we can really tap into that and i'm going to do a little meditation in a minute where we can tap into that so Steve and I, I have my own theories about, you know, what's, what's happening with the virus and Aiden has, you know, backed up some of the things that I've been feeling and Steve and I are not in agreement about certain conspiracy theories. We've had some heated discussions. We've been like, I can't believe you believe that. And I can't believe you don't believe that. And, and what it's, they can you share what you believe, <laughs> what Aiden has given yeah. you. What he has given me is that it is um, that it is man-made. Mm -hmm. Having said that, I was speaking about this with my daughter the other day. Now that the glaciers are melting and there's a lot of the ice cap that is melting, there is a lot of there are a lot of bacteria and viruses um, um, that are trapped in the ice in the glacial ice that is really being released now. So there are a lot of things that are being released to our planet now that have been. Um, kind of frozen in time for a very long time. So this isn't going to be the only thing that's going to hit the planet. Um, but this particular thing was manufactured and uh, even confirmed for me that a lot of it was um, political and, you know, financial, et cetera, et cetera. And that made me sad. I was like, you know, 
coming into the age of Aquarius, recognizing that the feminine is rising. You know, I just felt like, okay, could we not be past this? But he did assure me that this is just like the breaking apart and the falling apart that we're going through in order to rebuild it. Yes. Um, so I have a lot of peace about it overall. Um, Steve's beliefs are a little bit deeper about that and I'm not going to get into it. <laughs> <laughs> it's not about Steve's beliefs anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Anyway, so so we have had a lot of family discussions around it and um, there's a lot of family things happening right now because my daughter's about to give birth. She's with us right now. Um, that means another daughter who hasn't been in isolation as long as we have can't come over. Like, you know, there's a lot of stuff that we have to deal with at heart level. But um, overall, I know that... Okay, so somebody was interviewing me yesterday and they were asked, I'm sorry, my phone is beeping. I'll just put that on. <laughs> very popular. I'm very popular, yes. Um, so I was being interviewed yesterday, and what I was saying is that when we come into some kind of crisis mode, we kind of immediately start, after a while, because it's so surreal, we start believing that this might be the new reality, this might be the new life. And it's really, really important to remember that this is a moment in time. Right. It's going to pass. We're going to move through this. We will be stronger for it. Um, so not to worry. Uh, and the other thing too, and one thing that I wanted people to really um, understand is that if you go back to any time in your life that was really a trauma or a tragedy or the ending of something or the upheaval of something always what comes out of it is the new. So it's always a rebirth of something new and it's always something more positive. You'll rarely hear people talk about a time in their life where everything got dismantled and then when it got put back together, it was worse than what it was. You know, 99% of people will say, thank God that happened because from that experience, I learned X, Y, and C mm -hmm. or I became X, Y, and C. And so this, I mean, what I've been told when I've talked to my guys is that, you know, this entire pandemic is really about getting the universe, the world to stop what we were doing, like really stop, not just pause, stop. Um, and to rethink the way that we've been doing things. For example, the global warming, the pollution, and all those other things, like the biggest thing that we've heard in LA, in, in like a metropolitan city, is that the air is different. Mm. And you see the sky, and you can see the stars, and that's because there's not all these cars on the road. And like, you can get places, and it's, it's you know, it's giving people time back. And so we're getting more connected with nature, and we're actually connecting more with each other with mm -hmm. people because we're not seeing them and we're not taking for granted that we're going to see them every day. We're like mm -hmm. making an effort to actually get on a zoom call or get on a FaceTime video or however we're doing it, but we're doing more of it. So I think we were losing that sense of connection. Mm -hmm. um, there's just so many things, like so many different ways to look at the positive to sort of rewrite the story about what's happening right now. Mm -hmm. Like, yes, in many ways it's a pandemic because of, the health issues and the fact that people are dying mm -hmm. uh, and out of that is going to come something beautiful. And so it's really bringing awareness to, for you individually, like how will you shift and change what you were doing before based on what's happening now? Yeah. And it's brought a lot of awareness of us to how we treat ourselves and our bodies because on a yearly basis to give perspective, between 250 and 600,000 people die of the flu. Mm -hmm. That's a big number. Yeah. But, you know, we've, we've kind of gotten complacent with it and we haven't been thinking about how can we increase our own immunity? Mm -hmm. How can we be gentler with ourselves? How can we be more loving and compassionate with ourselves mm -hmm. so that we can have less stress and we can, you know, we can elevate our way of being in the world. So I feel that... And obviously, you know, there's a lot of compassion for the people who are 
moving on who are transitioning and their families who have to deal with those transitions. People are losing their businesses. People have lost their jobs. Um, so those are the real hard facts of it. And at the same time, we are shedding a very, very old skin as a consciousness, you know? Yeah. I mean, something that you just brought up is something I think it's really important we talk about, and it's the financial impact of what's happening to so many people, because we haven't seen anything like this for, I don't know how long. It's like since mm -hmm. almost the Great Depression. And I think the biggest fear that is coming up for people, for all of us, is the financial impact of what's happening. So, you know, millions of people are losing their jobs and millions of people that are about to end work, it's, they aren't gonna, nobody's gonna be hiring. And, you know, it's really, really scary. But for me, it's brought to awareness how we base so much of our happiness or um, so much of our sense of peace on financial security. And like what just happened is just a reminder how there is no security in anything. Like one day you have a job and the next day you don't. And you know, one day you have something, the next day you don't. And the, at the end of the day, we're all gonna be okay. Um, but it's scary, it's bringing up fears. And I just wanna acknowledge for everybody who's mm. listening, that fear is really real, but there's a way to turn it and to shift it. Because as Monica was saying, like this is a moment in time you know, like everything is going to turn around. So, um, and we don't know when, but in that loss of a job, if you're one of those people that just lost work or you're a small business, like what is, what, what is something else that you can be doing in this time for yourself? Some kind of act of self-care, um, being able to reach out to people to to help you, to support you? Like, what are some other things you could be doing for you? I think is really important because the first place that I think all of us are going is like, oh my God, now what? Oh my God, now what do I do? And the fear, I think, brings in more of that. You know, like wherever we put our energy, it's just more of that comes in. And I'm such a, I, I live that myself, <laughs> you know, where I worry and stress over things that just, you know, never happen. And then more of, I bring more of it in. Okay, why don't we do a little quick exercise to help us ground ourselves and then we can do, and then Dina, you're gonna suggest a little writing exercise, I believe. Yeah. Okay, so let's close our eyes. <sighs> the first thing I'd like us to remember is that we are luminous beings, that we do come from the stars, that we are, from the stars, but we're also from this physical plane. So we don't want to minimize the fact that we are human. We came here to be human, but also to remember how luminous we are. And I'd like us to just center our focus on our heart. And for a moment, let's just settle into our heart, build a little nest in there. Look around, see how it feels. What is the territory of our heart at this moment? What is the environment of our heart? And I'd like us to start, if we are feeling, feeling any fear or tension or disappointment, anger, grief, I would like us to gather everything that is in our heart that is causing us to contract right now. I'd like us to lovingly gather all those feelings and all those emotions. I'd like us to package it up into a beautiful little packet and tie it up with a little string. And I'd like us to imagine a cord, a grounding cord, emerging from our root chakra. And I would like us to send this little package down to our root chakra and from our root chakra to let it slide down this grounding cord 
that is growing and is growing towards the center of the planet. I'd like us to give all this tension and anger and grief and anxiety and anything that just doesn't feel right to you right now. Give this little parcel to the Great Mother. Leave it at the center of the planet in her womb and allow her to transmute this for you. Allow her to cradle you at this time, to cradle you as an adult and you and your inner child. Allow her to be that solace and to know that you don't have to carry everything by yourself. And that even if those around you are not able to have any compassion for what you're feeling right now, or you don't have anyone to speak to, or maybe you have spoken to others and you're just not getting the support that you need, know that you can also go, always go to the Great Mother. And you can always leave these things with her. And returning back to heart center, I'd like you to look around at the environment and the territory of your heart now. And know that anytime you feel anything that is unsettling, ungrounded, you can always create this little parcel and send it down, 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 down the grounding cord and know that it is re received with love and unconditional, unconditional compassion. And for the last bit of this meditation, I'd like us to locate our wings. I'd like us to notice between our shoulder blades, there's a very specific spot and you know where it is, where you can locate your wings and you can begin to unfurl them. Often in times of stress, we pull our wings in and we forget how to fly. But I would like to remind you, and my guide Aiden would like to remind you, and the Star Nations would like to remind you that you do have wings and you do know how to fly. And you do know how to remember that you are a luminous being and that everything that is happening to you on a physical level can be transmuted within your energetic body. And you always have access to your wings and you always have access to the wisdom of your heart. And if anything is going to take us through this, it is going to be the wisdom of our heart. Let us return now to the present moment and open your eyes as you are ready. Thank you for that beautiful meditation. Hello. Hi. I'm back. <laughs> I hope that really helped ground everybody. Um, it, it's amazing because we don't take the time to just do that was really a five minute meditation. Yeah. Five minutes is like a nothing. And so many of us don't take those five minutes to ground and connect. Mm -hmm. um, so Monica and I said that, you know, we wanted to keep this short and sweet and powerful. And so um, I wanna end with just offering a couple writing prompts. And the reason that I think that's so powerful is that as a writer, I know for me, like I've kept a journal my entire life um, and writing it out, like writing out the fears and writing out the anxiety and writing out all the things that are, that you're grateful for and that are coming up, it holds a lot of power. And I really highly suggest that like when you write it out, that you keep it somewhere where you can look at and refer back to it. Um, so if you don't have a piece of paper right now, you can pause and go grab one. Um, but if you do just a couple things that I want you to write down and ask yourself, um, the first one is, 
I want you to make a list of five things that you took for granted um, before the coronavirus became a thing that made us all stay at home. Like five things you took for granted that when things go back to normal or semi-normal um, that you won't take for granted again. It could be anything from being able to go into the grocery store and get what you need when you need it. It could be, um, you know, it could be just being able to be with your coworkers, you know, some your, your colleagues every day. It could be, you know, being able to get together and play sports um, if that's something that you do. So five things that you took for granted before that you won't after this. Um, the second thing that I want you to write is what is the very best thing that can happen at the end of this in these three areas? What's the very best, best thing I can imagine happening in my relationships? Um, what is the very best outcome I could see happening with my personal health, with my physical, emotional, spiritual health? The very best possibility that can come out of this. Um, and third, what is the best possibility or outcome that can happen in the area of my, I'll say work, not everybody works, but in the area of my contribution in the area of, you know, what I give to the world. So for some of us, you know, we don't work a traditional job, but there's something that we put out into the world. And so what, what can you create from this space and from this time that you have, um, and we're planning on bringing everybody together again, but live so that people that you can share that with us and it can be an open conversation because we want to hear that. Um, and maybe Monica, we can close with our own, like what is, we'll take one of those questions, like for you, what is the best possible thing that you see coming out of this for what you do, what you put out into the world? For me, it's going to be being closer to my purpose because I've really had to sink deep into that mm -hmm. and think about what is it that I'm doing here? Like what is really, really important for me? What is important for me as a human being and as a life being? Mm -hmm. So I've really sat around a lot and thought, you know, what is it that I'm actually doing? Is this really important? Is yeah. this what I'm here to do? I've had a lot of, a lot more time to think about it. I, I agree. It, and I would say the same for me. I think in the area of, for me and my personal relationships and with my children and I, it, they've always been good. And the area for me where I've not given enough thought and time is career um, and what I want to be putting out into the world. And so the best possible outcome for me at the end of this is that I will more fully step into my soul's work, which mm. is doing this and in being of service and, you know, uh, writing more and getting my book out and finished and published and, you know, all the things that are of service to the world and to other people and to being in those kinds of relationships um, instead of putting it off. So I pulled a little card for us. Oh, I pulled one too from my deck. So guess what I got? What'd you get? Coyote, my spirit name. <laughs> Love it. Um, coyote's medicine is um, coyote howls in the shadows to remind you that this may be a painful lesson to learn. Beware of the shallow waters right now. All that glitters there will not turn up gold, but we can make the best of it. That's so interesting. Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, we're always looking, we're always looking to make sense of things. Mm -hmm. And the thing is that sometimes things don't make sense. Yeah. And we have to be okay with that in the moment and know that this is just this moment. Yeah. You know, just really want to bring us back to that, that there's just, this is a moment. Right. In our life. Well, I've been pulling every morning from this deck. I have a lot of different decks, but this is, you know, an angel deck that I pull from. And actually my children and I have been pulling from the deck. And um, so I pulled this right before you and I got on this call. We all picked one and I picked this one. And I 
it's of course it's very relevant to what's happening it it's called it says my attention to it invites it in mm. it's just the way that i experience life like yeah. <laughs> whatever i believe i manifest and i'm sure that you mm. guys do too um, so I'm going to read it. Every thought that you give your attention to expands and becomes bigger, a bigger part of your vibrational mix. Whether it's a thought of something you want or it's a thought of something you do not want, your attention to it invites the essence of it into your experience. Mm. So we have a choice. We can put out more fear, more worry, more anxiety, worried about you know, coming in contact with somebody who has the virus, worried about we're going to lose our job, worried about our retirement funds. We can put all of our focus on that, or we can choose to put the focus into spreading love, being of service to other people, coming together as community, connecting more with each other, connecting more, you know, with nature, with family, and then also speaking the words this is a moment in time and this is going to end mm -hmm. at some point. And I'm going to make the most of this reset. So I invite you to put your energy and focus there. <laughs> That's where mine's going this weekend. I'm so glad we had this time together. I am too. It's always amazing to spend time with you. Yeah. And I have never actually met in person. Well, we will this well, we will in September because the ban is going to be lifted and everything is going to be fine and we're all yeah. going to be traveling again. Exactly. Um, yeah, so we're going to be together in September. And I just want to thank everybody who finds their way to this video, who yeah. is watching it after we've posted it. <laughs> thank you for taking the time to spend these moments with us and know that all shall be well. Namaste. Namaste. Thank you. Dina, Thanks, Monica. Thank you, everyone.